Please join me in the morning prayer as we begin to meditate upon these words. Lord, as we do begin to meditate upon these words, your words, we ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would come to us, that your Holy Spirit would speak to us. Make us open vessels, Lord, of your love and grace. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Love one another. <coughs> And everyone who sees this love will know you're my disciples because of the love that they see. Love one another. A new commandment, Jesus says. Well, really? I thought this whole book was about love. I mean, from Genesis on, it is about love. But Jesus said, but this is a new commandment. To love like I've loved you. And what I really see with this is the learning is over, and the doing needs to begin. We're not just sitting around in the campfire and listening and learning and hearing all about what love is supposed to be. We know what love is supposed to be. We know that we've received love, and now is the challenge to get out and do it. And to love others. To love the most unlovable. And by the way, Jesus could have said, you disciples have been some of the most unlovable. <laughs> Those guys that he called together that did not listen to him, that fell asleep on him, that denied him, that deserted him, that did not ever understand until he was arisen what he was talking about, that thought they were somehow going to rule this side of the world, and yet Jesus, so patient with them, they saw not only how he loved them, but how he loved others, how he, being in the form of God, didn't take that for granted and became a human being and became a human being and became a servant to human beings. And so Jesus comes from that throne in heaven to walk the roads and to serve the dying and to serve those that were not included by anybody else. Jesus says, like that, love like that. Give yourself completely like that, like I did for you. Okay, that's the mm -hmm. And, you know, with that surly bond of disciples, we read later on in the book of Acts that the church, church does start. And we read early on in Acts that, wow, incredible stuff was happening. The people were coming together, they were worshiping, they were eating, of course. Church people have always eaten, I guess. <laughs> and... Everybody saw what was happening to the poor, to the forsaken, to the, to the women, to the elderly, to the children. And they wanted in. It says that this life was happening. They were loving each other. And so the Lord added to their number daily. Now, it was, it was a rough day for the, the church because, yes, there was persecution. But there's even historians that were outside of the church that remark, look at the, look at the Christians and how they love each other. It was a witness to the world. Look at the Christians and how they love each other. Well, I've been struggling with this verse for you know a couple of weeks as I've been contemplating this. And you know, God does have a sense of humor. <laughs> I learned that I think almost every day. <laughs> and because I, I've been having fun struggling with this verse, because it's about love. And it's about, well, what can we say about it? Well, the other day, um, I have a friend named Peter out in uh, Colorado. And Peter is uh, a friend of mine, and he's also a Facebook friend of mine. You know, <laughs> those, all those Facebook friends you have. And uh, something kind of interesting happened because Peter has another friend who is, I guess, about my age, and he is six foot four, and he's 220 pounds, and he's silver. <laughs> and he has four green glasses and he, and he looks goofy when he looks into a camera and Peter had his picture taken with this friend and put it on Facebook and Facebook asked Peter do you want to tag Doug House Howling? <laughs> that poor guy <laughs> do you want to tag I said I need to find out who this guy is and it turns out my friend Peter's friend is a really gifted author. Christian man who's written two Christian books 
on what it means for a Christian to love. And the first book it was, Love Does. In other words, love is an action term. Love is also a noun because we're receivers of love. God is love. We can't give what we haven't, what we haven't uh, received. So his first book is God, but God, Love Does. The second book, which I have on Kindle, not in print, is Love Everyone Always. Whoa, didn't know if I really wanted to read that. <laughs> see, there's some people I really don't want to love everyone always, but Love Everyone Always. He's a uh, Bob, Bob Goff, very gifted author, uh, read him. Uh, and one of the gifts he has, he has stories that he tells of the reckless way that he lives life, just giving, just sharing God's love. And one of them is in his neighborhood. There's a, in, in their neighborhood, in their block, they have not just a block party, but they have a parade every New Year's Day. New Year's Day morning, they have a parade. Several years ago, a widow moved into their block, into their neighborhood, and they really decided that they wanted to really be gracious with this person. And of course, they found out, as you might imagine, that as they opened their hearts to her, they got more than a thousandfold in return. And this is the woman that became the grandmother to their children and, and became family to them. And he talks about, with great love, how uh, how important Carol became to them and to the block, to the neighborhood. Well, Carol developed cancer, and she struggled with it. And there was the day that, that Carol said, I really want to get up on New Year's morning, and I really want to walk down the block and be in our fun parade and have fun with the neighborhood, but I just don't think I can do it. Well, Bob has a Harley Davidson with a sign. <laughs> And so there was, they rumbled down the street, Bob driving the Harley Davidson and Carol in the sidecar, and they had a great and memorable time, and, and there was just love all over in the air. He talked about how over the next year as her condition deteriorated, how their relationship grew closer and, and, and very close in touch with God. Lots of visits, we're talking about God and prayer and what life was meaning. And finally, Bob, um, came to her one day to her bedroom, to her bedside in the hospital, and the doctor was just leaving. The doctor had just told her, it won't be long. Death is coming. It's coming. And so she, she went home to be comfortable before she passed away. Bob was at her bedside, praying with her, talking with her. And he said, you know, Carol, there's fuck of this. Is there anything you, you want to do? And she said, you know, I've never toilet papered a house with this. <laughs> How deeply spiritual, huh? <laughs> and they went out to one of the other neighbors' houses. And of course, they couldn't do it in the darkness. You know, it was daylight. And as they were tossing one of those last rolls over, a squad car pulls up. <laughs> Lights flashing and going. And the policeman noticed very early on what was really happening. And we're very gracious. Talk to Carol about what jail would be like. You know. <laughs> and he talked about what Bob went on to say, you know, the impact that Carol had on their lives, but deciding to serve her, and they were blessed in return, and they kind of become family. And he, he talks in fun ways about doing things that you might not normally ever think of, to just serve people and be there. Tony Campolo is an extremely dynamic speaker. And uh, he's headquartered out of Pennsylvania. And he tells about the time that he was speaking in Honolulu, which is like going to another country, you know, many time zones. <laughs> and, he, and his body was not adjusting to the time yet. So there he was in the middle of the night, wide awake, and just looking for some place to maybe have some kind of an early breakfast at about 2.30 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning. Couldn't find any place open except a diner that you really wouldn't want to go into. <laughs> on a side street, kind of out of the way, hardly noticed. And once he was in the diner, he realized he really, really did not want to eat here. <laughs> but he had a cup of coffee in the building. And as he sat there, this group comes in. There were, there was a loud group. 
And what it was, it was some prostitutes from the street that came in. They, they come in every night. And one of them, he's over the, the conversation, he's overhearing it, and one of them begins to say, hey, it's my birthday tomorrow. And the reaction is, well, so what? You expect us to throw a party for you? No, 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 no. And he hears the, and he hears this person saying, you know, no, no, no one's ever thrown a party for me. Now I don't expect that. I'm just saying it's my birthday. And he talked about the owner of the cafe who was also serving him the food, just being this crusty, curmudgeon old guy, and his wife was there as well. And so this group left, and Tony said, "This do they come in? Yeah, they come in every night, about the same time." And he said. Who, tell me about this person that, you know, it was Agnes, her name was Agnes. She's going to have a birthday party. And, she, and he said, you know, really, Agnes is pretty nice. She really tries hard to help people out and things like that. Tony said, well, what would you think if we threw Agnes a birthday party tomorrow morning at 3.30 when they come in to the diner? Oh, that'd be a good idea. She baked the cake. They had the balloons, they had the streamers. Word had gotten out so that the diner was actually pretty full at 3.30 in the morning when Agnes came in. To her surprise, and she's overwhelmed. Agnes, happy birthday party. And she was so overwhelmed that she, she couldn't even cut into the cake because she didn't want to ruin it, she didn't want to mess it up. And, and eventually she took the cake and she, she went off to her own home. And as she was doing that, Tony gathers up the crowd and says, well, okay, let's pray. The owner of the cafe says, wait a minute, you didn't tell me you were a preacher. <laughs> you didn't tell me what this is all about. And he says, what kind of church are you connected with anyway? Tony said, I'm connected with a church that throws birthday parties for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. And then the owner said, you know, I'd be interested in being part of a church like that. And that's the kind of church that Jesus puts up. That's Jesus. Tony in that role is very much Jesus. And as I see as Christians, you know, I was struggling with is, is love a noun or a verb? Well, it's both. We receive God's love. And we're, we're, we're commanded to do something about it. And in the Christian church, oftentimes in my Christian life, I find it kind of, and I've been guilty of this myself, there's been times that I really came from being with a group of Christians and I've been blessed and enlightened and felt empowered and felt forgiven and freed and whatnot and had nothing to do with helping others. <laughs> and then there's other times I've been with other groups that did all kinds of stuff to help others but really didn't connect at all with God or realizing that God loves us and connects with us. But God calls us first of all to really realize just how much we are loved and then to share that love with others. As Jesus says, life I've loved you. More than just an idea, more than just a thought. And you know, um, to move from a noun to a verb. Uh, you know, in the church, we all say that we are called to love one another. And we are, and we do, we trust. And you know, in the contracts that Greg and I signed, the part-time contracts, there, there's very specific things about, you know, hours and pay and everything like that. What's not said, but what I trust is underlying everything, is that we are called to love you as church leaders. And we do. And when I pray for you, and I do, I, I pray for you each that, that you somehow have that group of people around you two or three or four, maybe they're living waters members, maybe not, but Christian people, two or three or four, that are your cheerleaders, that encourage you, that encourage you and challenge you at the right times too, that encourage you to be the person that God has called you to be and to serve the way in which God has called you to serve. And I pray that you have that as both a receiver as well as someone who, who uh, is, is giving. Now I'm going to encourage you this is the result of somebody's response at the last service. You'll rarely hear this in church. Get your cell phones out. <laughs> you don't have to do this, but think of that person. Think of that person that you want to encourage right now at the moment.